Hello and welcome to this course on mobile marketing. Here's a quick overview of what we'll be covering in this course. First, we'll discuss why mobile marketing is so important to your business, no matter what industry you're in. Next, we'll go over how to make your sites and pages more mobile friendly. After that, we'll take a look at the various methods of sending mobile traffic to your web properties. Finally, we'll cover a couple ways you can make special use of that mobile traffic when it shows up. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Mobile usage now represents 65% of all digital media time. As of 2016, mobile traffic makes up 56% of all internet traffic to leading U.S. websites. In response to this, 68% of businesses now have a mobile marketing strategy. And by 2019, mobile advertising will represent 72% of all U.S. digital ad spend. But it's not just businesses that are catching on. Consumers are starting to expect more, too. According to Google, 61% of users probably won't return to a mobile site that they had trouble with, and 40% of them will go to your competitors. 83% of consumers say a seamless experience on all their devices is very important, while 57% insist they won't recommend a business with a poorly designed mobile site. Of course, all that assumes users will even find a non-mobile friendly site, which is becoming less likely now that Google factors mobile friendliness into your search ranking. And that's all just pertaining to websites. Email mobile trends are even more eye-opening. Roughly 80% of consumers read their emails on a mobile device, and a shocking 70% say they delete emails immediately if they don't look good on a mobile device. This means you need to be thinking of mobile in your web design, your SEO, and your email marketing. Otherwise, your business could suffer just like many others who have failed to jump on this mobile trend. Luckily, you won't have that problem, because you found this awesome guide on mobile marketing. In the next few modules, we're going to show you how to take this mobile trend by the horns and leverage it to your advantage. And it all starts by making sure your web properties are mobile friendly, which is what we'll discuss in the next video. The mobile marketing journey starts with making sure your web properties are mobile friendly. This is important for a few reasons. Firstly, it provides a positive and enjoyable experience for your visitors and customers, making them more likely to return to your site and more likely to speak and think highly of your business. Secondly, it caters to the fact that pretty soon a majority of your visitors will in fact be on mobile devices, if they aren't already. Thirdly, it'll help you get found on search engines. Google has made it clear on multiple occasions that it seriously factors mobile friendliness into search rankings, and if you aren't mobile friendly, this means you'll be missing out big time on traffic. So generally, there's two ways to make a site mobile friendly. The first is to create a separate mobile version of your site, and the second is to make your existing site or page mobile responsive. We'll look at each of these. So until recently, the first option, having a separate mobile version of your site or pages, was more common. Companies were either hiring people to build separate mobile sites from scratch on one hand, or on the other hand, they'd rely on certain site builders or content management systems that would conveniently auto-generate and update a mobile version in real time when things were added to their desktop version. For most independent internet entrepreneurs, it was the latter option, of course. For example, on your desktop site, you could add a headline to your homepage, and then a button, and then a cool background photo, and then a new navigation option to a new page, and poof, the mobile version of your site would immediately have an easily visible version of that headline, an easily tappable version of that button, and in the case of the photo, it would either shrink it and place it above or below your other elements, or it would leave it as a background, but it wouldn't really look right on vertically held devices, or simply hide the image on the mobile version altogether. As for the navigation option that was added, it would be added to a special mobile drop-down menu. Examples of the website builders or CMSs that did this, and maybe still do, are Weebly, Wix, and many others. So that basically worked out okay, but there were a few problems. In many cases, not all the functionality would be available on the mobile version of the site. Entire buttons, options, and elements would be missing either because the designers wanted to keep things minimalistic, or because the mobile web building platform they used didn't allow certain things. Many users didn't like this and made a habit of going straight to the bottom of any mobile page they found and looking for a desktop version link so they could simply enjoy the desktop version by pinching and zooming on their device. The other problem from a designer perspective was that it was difficult to fully translate the business's brand image and feel and the full force of the desktop website presentation, like that stunning background image, onto these clunky, bulky, narrow mobile versions. Also, there were some problems with handling the ever-increasing number of mobile devices, from phones to tablets with varying screen sizes. For example, you might have people on full tablets getting stuck on weird, stretched-out mobile versions of sites on one hand, while other people with mini-tablets might find themselves on the full desktop version of some sites. 
Adding the proper scripts to properly identify incoming traffic devices and redirect them to the appropriate version of the site simply became a pain in the neck. And this was complicated even more by the fact that many users had different preferences. Maybe the mini tablet owner did in fact prefer to pinch and zoom on the desktop versions. Maybe the elderly full tablet user who didn't always have his or her reading glasses handy preferred the larger, bulky, minimalist layout of the mobile site stretched to fit the full tablet's biggish screen. Point is, there was no way to make everybody happy and few options for flexible multi-device friendliness. Then along came responsive web design. So the question was this, rather than have two versions of a site and struggle to please the vast numbers of new screen sizes and devices, what if you could have just one version of your site that could then magically shrink and adjust in direct response to the size of the screen that it was being viewed on? The industry produced what were called responsive sites and they immediately caught on. Depending on what type of CMS you use today, the mobile responsiveness might vary. An ideal responsive site will do the following. Headlines, paragraphs, and text in general will have their font size and layout adjusted to look perfect on any screen and fill it from left to right. Background images, depending on the settings chosen, such as centered versus stretched, will adjust themselves appropriately to be reasonably visible on all devices. Image elements will shrink to fill the screen from left to right. Other elements, like buttons or product images that may be arranged in a left to right multi-row matrix or grid on a desktop site, are rearranged to be stacked on top of each other in a way that fits any mobile device. For example, if you have 12 product images, each with a buy button below it, arranged in three rows of four images, then on a mini tablet, those rows might be adjusted to six rows of two images. And on a smartphone, they might become a single column of one stacked on top of the other while keeping their original left to right sequence or order and keeping the respective buy button under each image. And all this happened automatically on the same site with no effort required on the website owner's part. Get the picture? Now you see why responsive caught on so quickly, right? Now responsive design isn't without its own cons and kinks and some businesses still find that a separate mobile site still works better. So definitely sit down and determine which route is best for your business. Bottom line, look at your various options out there and come up with a plan to get your websites and landing pages mobile friendly ASAP. So once you've got your sites and pages mobile friendly, you need to get some traffic to them. Depending on the purpose of your landing pages, you might be looking for mobile only traffic or you might be looking at indiscriminate traffic in general and simply want to ensure that traffic is treated appropriately based on the visitor's devices. In many cases, if your goal is something mobile specific like collecting people's primary best email addresses and real names via a mobile opt-in tool like Warlord Mobile Leads, then you'll literally want only mobile traffic coming to your landing pages. We'll focus on free and paid methods of driving exclusively mobile traffic first, then indiscriminate traffic methods. So let's say you're trying to collect super high quality email leads because you're tired of low open rates, fake email addresses, and all that jazz. In that case, you'd need to look at a tool like Warlord Mobile Leads to collect primary emails and real names without visitors needing to type any info into an opt-in form. Problem is, tools like that only work on mobile devices. So you don't really want to send desktop traffic to a page where you're using a tool like that. Likewise, perhaps you're trying to branch out into SMS text message marketing and you want users who see an SMS signup offer to be on their mobile devices when they see it. Point is, sometimes you're going to want exclusively mobile traffic. There's a couple ways to do this. Firstly, you can use paid ads that run only on mobile. The high-end version of this would be paid native ads on social media platforms like Facebook or Twitter. These ads, while slightly more expensive, can actually be the most cost-effective because of the quality of traffic they send. We won't go into great detail on how to create these ads since that's not the focus of this guide, but feel free to check out our other guides on Facebook and Twitter paid ads for more details. Suffice it to say, there's a very clear option in the creation process for these ads where you can choose to display the ad for mobile users only. Choose that option and all your traffic will be mobile. Another paid option is to use mobile-specific ad networks like BuzzCity or AdModa. These platforms let you target mobile users who are browsing on mobile sites or using mobile apps within these platforms' respective networks. Remember those annoying text ads that you see while using the light version of your favorite phone app? Yep, that's what we're talking about here. The benefit of this is that you can get your ad in front of a ton of people and the clicks are very inexpensive, as little as one cent per click. The problem is that the traffic is much lower quality and less targetable. For example, if you're using native social media ads like Facebook, you can market your heart health related products to men over 50 in Texas who have expressed an interest in the American Heart Association or a certain brand of heart medicine, bingo. 
But if that's your target market and you're using one of these super cheap mobile ad networks like Buzz City, then you might not see much success. These networks do have some targeting capabilities, but they're not nearly as specific or reliable as the major social media sites. So you should only use them if your target audience is relatively broad to begin with. Another newer option is Facebook Instant Articles. So Facebook Instant Articles is basically a big push by Facebook to create articles that show up in the Facebook mobile app newsfeed and render in the blink of an eye without people having to be directed to an external page or wait for the article to load. The great thing about this is that it doesn't cost money and you guarantee that only mobile users are going to see these articles. So the idea is to add these articles to your content marketing plan and ensure they link or lead to a mobile landing page. This is a solid non-paid method for driving mobile only traffic. As for non-discriminate traffic, it's pretty simple. Just about every CMS will automatically show people the correct version of the site these days. Otherwise, you can use a simple mobile redirect script or plugin to redirect mobile traffic away from a certain URL and over to your desired mobile landing page. Of course, if your site is responsive, you don't even need to worry about this. That's it for this video. Go ahead and take a moment to skim through everything we've discussed and determine which traffic driving strategy might be best for your business. In the next video, we're going to discuss how to make use of that mobile traffic. After you've got some mobile traffic coming your way, you might be inclined to make specific use of it. Now the first general use of mobile traffic is more or less passive. That is, you get a good SEO boost from having a mobile site which has mobile traffic coming to it and staying on it because they enjoy it, rather than bouncing away within seconds because it's not mobile friendly, which hurts your SEO. The second use of having mobile traffic coming to a mobile friendly page is simply a positive brand image. Having an attractive mobile site reflects well on your business, makes people more likely to return, and makes them more likely to speak highly of you and share your business. This, of course, results in other things like mobile users clicking on your phone number to call your business or finding your opt-in forms or order buttons. But there's another, much more practical and specific way to make use of mobile traffic that hardly anyone talks about. And the reason nobody's talking about it is because it's brand new. This is literally a brand new state-of-the-art concept that was just introduced around early 2016 and it's still not very well known by most marketers. You see, it can be advantageous knowing what device people are on when they view your properties because of the different ways you can leverage those devices. Did you know that if a person's mobile device is prompted to send or prepare an outgoing email, by default, that email will come from whichever email account they designated as their primary email in their phone settings? This is a mobile-specific concept. Well, if you have mobile traffic, you can use a tool like Warlord Mobile Leads to actually create a little opt-in button that, when tapped, creates a pre-filled outgoing email with your choice of subject and body text, such as, please send me the free report, or something like that. And when the user hits send, that primary email address is added to your email marketing or autoresponder mailing list, along with their real name. Now, I'll give you a moment to rub your eyes and make sure you just read that correctly. Yes, this means you can leverage mobile traffic to ensure your opt-ins and leads are actually people's real, primary email addresses and real names. This means your marketing emails end up in an inbox that is actually checked several times per day, and you can personalize subject lines with people's names. Now that personalization has already been shown by itself to increase open rates by 29% and increase the profitability of your email campaigns by 73% while the overall effect of collecting primary email addresses and real names together via Warlord Mobile Leads has been shown to increase open rates by a whopping 533%. And no, that's not a typo. Now, email marketing and high-quality list building are not the focus of this particular guide, so we'll stop there. You can always check out our guides on list building and email marketing if you want more details on those. But the point is, if you're going to get mobile traffic, you might as well find a way to specifically leverage it. So, we've covered a lot about mobile marketing today. Probably the biggest takeaway right now is that this is non-negotiable. There's no debate. If you want your online business to survive today, you have got to be mobile friendly. And nothing that you learned in this course matters at all if you don't implement it. So, to that end, let's set up a quick three-step battle plan. Step one, pick a content management system or use your current one and ensure your site and pages look great on mobile. Step two, Choose one or more methods for driving mobile traffic to your properties. We suggest you spend a small amount of money experimenting with a few different paid ad options. Step three, leverage that traffic by using mobile specific tools like Warlord Mobile Leads to build a high quality, high open rate email marketing list. Don't put off implementing these steps. Take action and start executing this plan today.
And if you're interested in that resource we mentioned for building a high quality list with best email addresses and real names, go ahead and check out Warlord Mobile Leads and see if it's something that you can use in your email marketing.